Hey guys, so welcome back. Um, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to be printing this one in black and then doing a surface roll in color. So some students asked about what a surface roll would entail and how that would look, so I've decided to make this video to show them. Um, in the last videos I pulled these two pulls off the same plate. You can see this one has a lot more ink than this one, so you can get a range of impressions even from the same plate. Um, so for this particular plate, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe it up in black, like I did in the last video, and then I'm going to roll the surface with a green. So I'm going to be making a green using um, Charbonnel, and I'll be using Portland Black for the black. So that's the, the plan here. Um, the rollover, I'm using this brayer here, but you could use a, you know, a smaller one, like a speedball would be totally fine. Um, I don't have a glass slab to roll out on, so I've laid down a piece of acetate underneath my workspace so that I have something to roll the ink out on. And then over here I have my piece of paper that's soaking. For this process, you're going to get much better ink transfer if your paper is damp. Um, not saturated, but fairly damp. So I'm going to start out by going ahead and inking this black, and then I'll show you guys how to do a surface roll. This is just a t-shirt. Normally you would use a tarlatan for this process, but um, this is what I have. So I've balled it up into a little ball and I'm going to go ahead and wipe the plate. And this is why I like using a glass slab, but this will work for now. Just taking it slow. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to get the ink kind of smooth and thin on the surface of the roller. Okay, so that looks all right, and I have my little asparagus. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to roll the surface of the asparagus. So maybe I'll go at it. Go at it this way. Okay. 
So the effect here, the intention, is that the low spots will print black, but the raised spots will print green. So I'm excited to see how this one turns out. What I'm going to do now, because I really want these actually to be bright, is I'm going to go in with a um, rag and I'm going to wipe these little highlights back, back to white. Okay, so now that I've got him, this plate wiped up and ready to print, what I'm going to do is I'm going to blot my paper. So I've been soaking this, um, this is sketchbook paper, in a bath of water while I've prepared my plate. Uh, this paper is fairly heavyweight. I think it's 110 pound paper. It's not a printmaking paper, but it kind of acts like one, so I think this is a good substitute. Um, I found that using lighter weight papers has not given me as good an impression. So I'm just going to blot that on both sides. Okay. So next up, I'm going to go ahead and line that up. Oh, it's still too wet. So now that I've got my paper dampened, my plate wiped, and then rolled in green, and then I remove the green from those spots, I'm going to go ahead and actually tape the uh, piece of paper down to this um, second piece of paper. This just helps things from shifting. If I was feeling particularly fussy, I could draw out my registration on this piece of paper to help me line things up, but I kind of like it having a little tilt. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and place it down and then tape it in place. This just helps just hold everything down while I print. So then what I've got over here is just a piece of paper and I'm going to go ahead and burnish it with a spoon. Now, I really want to kind of push that wet paper into all of those low spots, nooks and crannies, but um, from my experience, pulling a couple of these before, I don't think the spoon is actually enough, so I'm going to see what I can get out of it with the spoon, but I'm going to also probably have to burnish into those low spots using a sharper tool. It's these low spots that will give us our two color.
Okay. So, what I'm doing with the burnisher is I'm just kind of pushing it into those low spots. This is what the blanket would be doing if I was printing it on a press. Kind of building up those areas and sort of squishing it down into those low spots. Now, it may look like the back of my paper is all sort of scored up by this, but the front of it is still printing really smooth. So I'm not too worried about these little marks that I'm making on the back with the sort of blunt end of my paintbrush. So once I kind of bring those in, and I really do want to emboss the edges, kind of give myself a sort of clean edge, the edge of my plate. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this back and we'll see what we got. So now I have a full color asparagus. Looking good. Okay, so now that I've pulled three, you can really see the difference. This one was printed first with not a lot of ink and one color. This was printed second with a lot more ink in that same color. And then this one here was printed in two colors ink with that surface roll. And so the idea here is that the intaglio wipe is leaving ink in those low spots, whereas the surface roll is giving tone and color to those high spots. Um, and you can see how that kind of built onto the plate. You could do this with any collagraph plates, really, and a lot of collagraph artists will kind of play with that balance between a relief plate and an intaglio plate. So that's pretty exciting. Um, it's really critical that the plate doesn't move while you're burnishing it into place, but there we go. Two different takes on the same collagraph plate. All right, thank you so much.